Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a electric bike. Uh, electric bike, well, it doesn't go anywhere without my legs as well. But it is the Swiss made Stromer ST3. A speed pedelec that runs 45 kilometers an hour and was designed as a commuter bike to get people out of their cars and commute on bike to work. But now, since it's got a carrier that is rated for 22.5 kilograms, I thought, hey, commuting, this might be a nice travel bike too. So, in the coming half hour, I will explain everything you need to know about the Stromer ST3, and I'll tell you if this is a commuter bike and a travel bike too. Enjoy the video! Welcome back to the review of the Stromer ST3 and I should apologize immediately to Stromer because I will probably say a few times Stromer because for years I have been thinking that on the O there were two little dots and then you call it Stromer instead of Stromer but no it is Stromer definitely. Now um, Stromer is a Swiss based company and they started designing bikes around 2007 and in 2009 the first bikes rolled out of the factory. Um, the philosophy of the Strömer founder Thomas Bingelli was that he wanted to do si design bikes to get people out of the car when commuting from home to work and in the evening back again. Um, and that's why he wanted to make a bike that was capable of doing shorter distances as fast as a car. The Stromer, the Stromer ST3, it is a speed pedaling, so it runs 45 kilometers an hour. So it is for the shorter distances, 15, 30 kilometers to work. Um, it is really a really good option. Um, it's green and well, you still get some exercise and with some, well, I mean quite a lot. Um, Stromer, Stromer asked me if I could do a review on this bike, the ST3. Um, and what I want you to know is that they asked me to do it, but they're not paying me for this. And after the review, the bike goes back to the manufacturer. And with all my other reviews, I'm not being paid by manufacturer. I don't have any affiliate deals and I don't have advertisements on my website. So I am 100% independent. Um, if you value this, please support me by subscribing to my YouTube channel and hit the alarm bell so you know when I upload a new video. And also please like my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram. It really, really helps. Now let's get back to the stroller and all the small, little, nice, beautiful details. But first, let me get the chair out of the way because this one is not necessary now anymore. Let's start with the fork and the frame. They are of course made out of aluminium because aluminium is strong and lightweight. Um, as you can see by the shape of the frame and the forefork, this is done by hydroforming and hydroforming is a technique that if you have for example a round aluminium tube and you put it into a big mold with a rectangular shape that if you put water inside the tube and you put a lot of pressure on that water or and so onto the tube it the tube forms in the direction or in the shape of the mold itself and that's how you get these really nice shapes um, what is quite spectacular is that on the top tube um, there is a little touch screen um, and this operates almost everything on the bike. Um, it's basically a little computer. On the down part of the top tube, right here, there is a button that switches the whole system on and it takes about 3-4 seconds between um, pressing and firing up. So that's not too long. On the Right side, you can see this little square black thingy. This is basically a button, but like so, I cannot touch it. Yes, I can touch it, but it don't, wasn't, won't do anything. When I press the touch screen and I press the unlock button, then I can press this one and on the other side, the battery compartment opens because that's the reason why this down tube is so big because it has houses the very big 
battery. Is there anything else to say on the frame itself? Yes, there is, because the frame itself um, on the head tube, there is this nice incorporated running light. Um, it's a very big, big unit, very solid piece of aluminium as well. And what I really do like about the whole frame and also about the front fork is that the welding is really neatly done. Um, it's smooth. But you can still see the craftsmanship of the guy or girl who made the welds or if it's a robot, you can still see the craftsmanship because it's got these nice little lumps over each other. And that's how you recognize really nice welds. Some bike manufacturers choose nowadays to make them smooth welding and it's basically put a lot of putty on top of the weld so you don't see the weld anymore so you don't know if it's well done or if the putty is hiding something and on the stromer i really really like it the stromer that i'm testing here is a size m and this is the smallest frame size available from stromer um, with my one meter and 69 centimeters this is fine they also have a size l and a size xl uh, and just to give you some measurements an example um, the c tube from this to there it is 432 millimeters and for a medium that sounds quite short but that's quite logical because the seat post is really really long and the um the top tube is really angled downwards quite steeply so that's why you get a relatively short seat tube um stromer does not state a weight of the bike on their website but i put it of course on my precise scale and i measured a weight of 31.6 kilograms and that is way 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 very heavy now um what you should know in relation to the weight of the bike itself is that it is legal to put 150 kilograms in total on the bike so that means the bike the luggage and the rider now um, if the bike weighs 31.6 kilograms and you don't do luggage then you are then you are allowed as a human to be 180 18.4 kilograms so be aware that this is the maximum rated kilogram for this bike and if you are a bit more heavy then please consult the stromer dealer what to do one of the reasons why i wanted to test the st3 was because it has a decent carrier um, and it's hidden behind my ortlieb panniers uh, and what i always do with every well basically bike that I test that has a carrier capability is that I put my um, luggage in there I put my panniers I fill them um, and in this case it's just with pillows um, but there is an exact weight of 15 kilos divided between the two um, bags uh, because 15, weigh, 15 kilograms that's about the amount of weight that when I am traveling uh, it's a, it's a am amount of weight that I like to take with me I don't like to carry too much um, then on top you see my tent um, this is a opland from Nordisk uh, but most of the time I have a duffel uh, there when there is also a sleeping bag in there so there's a few kilos more about four or five um, and in this case uh, the ST3 it doesn't have a uh, carrier in the front because otherwise I would have tested that as well but with the 15 kilos and a little bit uh, above the carrier is really capable um, the carrier itself it's rated for 22.5 kilos um, and when I take the luggage off you will see that it looks very flimsy but in fact it is not now let me take off the luggage <laughs> Ah. get it out of the way now what you can see and that's what i really like about this carrier um, it's connected of course to the rear um, seat stay but it's like with most bikes it's not connected or unlike like most bikes, it's not connected to the main frame itself but it's connected to the fender and the fender this is a really 
solid aluminium part. And it's not only flat, but on the inside there is a inner wall. So it's two layers of aluminium. And this is really a rugged, sturdy construction. And when I was biking um, with the panniers and changing rapidly into corners, you could feel that the bags, the panniers are one with the carrier and one with the bike and that's really good for the balance so in this way it is really a nice carrier and it is really up to a good holiday biking holiday trip the stroma st3 has a rear wheel mounted engine and it is a sino drive 2 um, and stromer claims a power of 820 watts, 44 newton meter of torque, and a maximum speed up to 45 kilometers an hour. Um, for the US, it is a little bit different because um, then it has 600 watts and it is a class 3 speed pedelec with a speed up to 28 miles an hour. So that's just for the US. Um, what I really like about the engine is and I've had a few other rear wheel mounted engines and a lot of mid mounted engines like the Bosch ones um, that the power delivery of this Sino Drive 2 is really very very smooth as soon as you put pressure on the pedals um, well there is a almost instant reaction to support what you whatever you are doing um, what i do did notice is that for example in front of a traffic light um, and you are in support mode three and you want to go away or drive away right away um, then sometimes this goes really really very quick so you have to change for traffic lights or if you want to do a lot of stop and go change into a lower gear so that you don't have to put so much pressure on um, the pedals so that the sensor senses it in a different way so that support is not that direct and what you also should not do is something that i like to do and that is get off the bike while standing onto one of the pedals and just kick off because then you put a lot of pressure on the pedal and the sensor thinks that you want to drive away while you actually want to get off um, and then when you're jumping off the bike wants to go so that's something that i noticed which is not very handy um, but overall the engine smooth 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 and very very silent and since i'm on this side of the bike anyway let's continue with the gears um, connected to the hub on the rear and of course to the engine is the cassette it's a shimano cassette with 11 teeth as the smallest pocket and 42 teeth as the biggest one um, in the front you will find a crank from FSA and the sprocket it has got 52 teeth. The combination of 52 in the front and the cassette, the 1142 cassette in the rear, makes it a really broad range. Which means that in the smallest one you can do really nice steady long hauls with the wind in your back doing full speed uh, while with the larger sprocket if you're into a mountainous area climbing a mountain should be no problem um, gear changing is done by a derailleur from shimano and this is a shimano xt and the combination comes with a shifter a slx from shimano micro shifter in the front with a lever for pushing and for pulling and I noticed that it never ever ever failed me once it's very very precise and on a bike like this it should be like this I talked about the motor I talked about the gears but I did not mention the battery yet although I did mention the button and now let me open the battery compartment press the touch screen click press the button and on this side you see that there is a really huge battery um, this is a 983 watt hour monster battery and i requested this from stromer because on the website they advertise it with a range of 180 
kilometers. And I think that is quite nice if you want to travel from campsite to campsite or want to go to B&B, that kind of stuff. It's not about the short distances from home to work and back again. Now, um, the 983 watt hour is the biggest battery that Stromer gives with a bike. Um, but they have a smaller, they've got four options basically and the smallest one and also the cheapest one is a 500 watt hour battery. So if you're looking for this kind of bike then also go and have a look what kind of battery that you would need for your purpose. As I said before, a range of 180 kilometers, but there is a little bit more to this than meets the eye. Now let's discuss battery life. During this review, I did my best to drain the battery as fast as I could. That means riding a lot in sport mode three and always against the wind, of course. Now in support mode three, um, I drained the battery in about 65 to 70 kilometers and my speed would be about 45 kilometers an hour, sometimes a bit faster, sometimes a bit slower, but this is what it takes to drain the battery completely, 65 to 70 kilometers. The first time when this happened, I thought what a rubbish bike and what a rubbish battery. Um, but this is of course not the case because I came to the conclusion that I have a misperception in my head and that's got to do with using the bike as a travel bike. Because the advertised range of Stromer is 180 kilometers and I thought that I could do 180 kilometers in full support mode, which is of course not realistic. Um, if you use the bike for commuting and you want to go from home to work and back again fast then yes use support mode 3 and as long as you don't do much more than 65 to 70 kilometers in a day you don't have a problem and of course if you bring the charger or you buy a second one you can charge in the office as well if you are a holiday biker and you want to use this bike for your holidays then you will probably be more into support mode 2 or support mode 1 and in support mode one, you do about 20, 25 kilometers an hour. And then, yes, then you can get to this 180 magical number. To be totally honest, I tried support mode one and I don't get the point. Because yes, you get an extension in your range, but it also means that you're only doing 20, 25. Well, then I'll just buy a e-bike or I'll just go on my normal trekking bike because then I do about 20 if I need to. Um, and this bike doesn't really feel that when you're doing support mode one that you get any support whatsoever. So my advice would be if you're on holiday, try to play with support mode two a lot and maybe one and maybe three. Sometimes when you go uphill or when you've got the wind in your face, then you change the mode and then you will probably get a decent range of about 120 kilometers and yes you will be a bit slower than 45 kilometers an hour into it's about 30 but if you are on holiday and you do maximum speed then you are in two hours at your destination and that's not the point of being on holiday i like biking the whole day so support mode two and sometimes one and sometimes three would be fine for me now, what I would like to clarify now is that once it happened to me that I ran out of battery juice and that was about seven kilometers before I got home. No power whatsoever and of course the storm blowing full in my face. And then I can tell you that this is a very heavy bike and it is not nice to ride a empty bike into the storm for seven kilometers. One thing I'm almost forgetting, it takes about five hours and 45 minutes to fully charge this battery. And I must state that that was in my shed when it was six degrees. Um, Sturmer claims about 15 minutes less, but that's probably in a little bit more warmer conditions. And talking about warm and cold, because that affects battery life as well. What did I measure? When I kept the bike in the shed a few nights ago, um, with six degrees outside temperature, 
the battery, it had a charge of 34%. And then I thought, well, maybe I should take it inside and see what happens when I put it in my living room where it's about 18, 19 degrees. And then the next morning I woke up, in the room it was 18 degrees, and yes, the battery charge was 46%. So that means that the battery is greatly influenced by temperature, which is of course logical because all batteries have this. So be aware that your range is depending on temperature as well. So the numbers that I gave you with the outside temperature of about six degrees is also because of those six degrees. So if it would have been nice and summery 25 degrees outside, my range would probably be way longer. Just that you know this. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the Strömer E-System. That's how I like to call it. First, let me switch it on again and there you'll see it. Um, I've got a few options. Um, let me put this first into English. Because that's way easier for you guys. Um, there's more. You see the touch screen works pretty fine. And then we push it under here and then we're back. Now, let's have a look at the main screen. Um, of course, this is the kilometers an hour, the clock, and this is the trip speed that you're doing. And you can see on top of here as well that there is a little green light, which means that the lights are on. You cannot switch them off, they're on always. If I press this once, then I see the trip distance and I see the trip time. Now press it again and I see that the battery still has a range of 145 kilometers. But now um, let me change into the support modes. It's now in support mode one, 145 kilometers. Now I'll change into two and I get 55 and I change into 3 and I get 45. So support mode is really affecting the range of course that you're doing. Now, that's basically what I wanted to show you on the screen. Now, the screen is on the top tube. And in this respect, it is not really visible if you are biking. You have to look down to the screen to be really aware of the speed that you're doing. And to be honest, when you're doing 45 kilometers an hour, I don't think this is the way to go. Um, now, Stromer made a very nice stem. It's flat. And when you buy the bike, you get this connection piece. At least that's what they told me. Um, I got it from a friend who works at a local uh, bike store. And I use normally a clock lock system on the handlebar itself, but this works quite a sort of similar. Uh, you've got this catchy thing, that one, and it goes like so in here, twist it. And now if I unlock it, then, oops, go back, then I have the Strömer Omni app. Grüezi, which means welcome in Swiss. And I've got my bike, it's the marketing bike from Stromer and I see almost the same data. But what I don't see is the speed that I'm doing. It's not in the Omni app, which I think is pretty stupid. What I also would expect on a bike like this is that if I have an app with a map, funny, um, I can see the locations of Stromer stores, bike stores, but I cannot plot a route to my mother-in-law, for example, um, which would be perfectly logical if I have a speed pedelec that I can plot a route anywhere and that there is a calculation going on between the map and the energy that is stored in the battery and the route that I'm doing. Some other bike manufacturer do it this way and it is really clever. And on a bike like the ST3, I would expect this to be like this. And it is not, and I think that is really a pity. What I do like about the app though, is that if I turn my screen on again, whoops, um, that I can also 
push the button and report my bike as stolen. So when this one is not on the bike and I've got this one in my pocket, um, that's a really cool feature because there is a SIM card in it and it's connected to the internet. You know where the bike will be at any time. Um, and probably the people from Sturm also know what I'm doing with the bike because they can probably track me. I don't know if this is privacy um, justified, but hey, I don't have any secrets to them. If you use your phone on the ST3, then you charge it, of course, with the big battery. So you will never run out of juice in your phone. Um, you connect it to the battery with your normal USB cable that is tangled around the stem basically, not very beautiful. And then here you've got this rubbery thingy. And in here there is the USB port. And this is not the easiest to do. And then it folds back in here again. But it doesn't fold back totally. There is still a little gap. So when it rains, I'm not sure if this construction is 100% waterproof. I know for sure that I don't like the look of it, uh, especially not because the wire going around like this. Wouldn't it be cool if there was a wireless charging system just in the stem of the ST3? That would be a very cool innovation. When you're doing 45 kilometers an hour, then you know that good brakes are essential. Um, and Stromer made very nice brakes for the ST3. Or not only Stromer, because it's a development together with the Americans from TRP. Um, in the front and in the rear is a disc brake of 203 millimeters. And in the front, and you'll see it here, is a brake caliper with four pistons. And in the rear there's one with only two pistons. The brake levers, they are from TRP as well, and they are adjustable, so they fit small hands and big hands. I like the way how the braking force is applied by the levers into the calipers and onto the disc brake, because it begins quite nice and easy, just with a little touch, but then when you squeeze it a little bit harder, then they are really brakes from hell. They are that fierce, so when you go out for the first time, be aware of this. One really cool feature about the brake levers is, is that there is a sensor built into them. And as soon as you apply the brake lever, um, it cancels the operation of the motor. And that means that the engine, since it is in the rear wheel, is used as a braking force as well. And this saves brake pads. But there's a little bit more to this as well, because as soon as you are going downhill for a very long period, the engine is also used to regenerate the battery. And Stromer claims that if you do about two kilometers of descent, it will charge the battery for about 20% or up to 20%, which I think is, if you are on a biking holiday into the mountains, a pretty cool feature. You've seen it already. The Stromer is equipped with really bright lights. The front one is a Roxum Z4E Pro. And in its brightest, which is for the longer distance, it produces 900 lumen. Um, and in the more friendly one, it produces still 600 lumen. Now, we talked about the brake levers, but what I did not tell you, of course, is that the brake lever also operates the rear light. Um, it's there, it's also a uh, Roxim one. This is really a bright light. And this works in the daytime as well, because that's where you need safety too. Now let's talk riding comfort. Um, as mentioned above, frame and fork are made out of aluminium and both of them are extremely stiff. This is good because it makes the ride very predictable. But there's also a downside and that's the fact that as soon as you experience minor bumps in the road or tarmac that's not that very smooth, that you feel every little hump and bump into your hands and into your bum. And in that way it is not that comfortable. But there is one really positive thing about the comfort and that is the tires. Uh, the rims and the tires, they're 27.5 inch 650B. Um, and the tires, they are from Pirelli, developed in cooperation again with Stromer. Um, and the cycle 
ST balloon tires, you can play quite nicely with the tire pressure inside it. So if you are traveling home to work on really smooth tarmac, pump it up a little harder and we are doing more holiday um, modes with minor bumps and humps, then you can release a little bit of the pressure and have a little bit more of a comfortable ride. There are two things that I did not tell you yet. Um, this is the bike, how I got it for the review. Um, and I told you that you could not change the position of the stem. Yes, that is true. But if you want to buy a bike like the ST3 at Stromer, um, then you've got the possibility to choose for a different stem. Um, they've got uh, several options that are way more uh, less sporty, so maybe a li little bit more comfortable the way you like it. Um, and that said, this one is a stiff fork because it's a normal one. But Strömer, Stromer also has a suspension upside down fork. So if you like a little bit more comfort, then you can buy that one as a option as well. Um, but this is something that I did not do. And I know the suspension fork retails for about 900 euros extra, I believe. So that will make the bike a bit more expensive. There's one last remark that I would like to make about a very important part of the Stromer and that is the side stand. The side stand is from Pletcher and it is rated for 40 kilos. At least that's what this little sticker tells me. Now the bike weights 32 kilos. That means that I've got 8 kilos left for my luggage. Now if I'm commuting with my laptop, with my sandwich, maybe some sporting gear, uh, to do during the lunch, um, then, well, maybe it's not eight kilos, but it's getting close. If I got a carrier on the rear that is rated for 22.5 kilograms, then this side stand is underrated. So I would advise the people at Stromer, please put a more heavy duty side stand on your ST3. I'm back in my lazy chair again. That means it is time for the verdict. How do I rate the Stromer ST3? Well, I promised myself not to mention it, but there's no way of not mentioning it. The Stromer ST3 is a Tesla Model 3 on two wheels. It is noiseless and the power delivery of the rear wheel mounted motor is very silky smooth and I love it. The lights are super, the handling is predictable and the ride is very comfortable on smooth commuting tarmac. The range of 65 to 70 kilometers uh, in maximum support mode is fine for commuting and the other two support modes work for relaxed holiday trips. The carrier is good in carrying two full panniers and even put a big duffel between them. It's not a problem. The brakes are top notch. You should be aware of the brake power. It's really, really fierce. You should also be aware that frame and front fork are very, very stiff. That means that it's not always a very comfortable bike on uneven surfaces. The fact that the screen that displays the speed is between my legs, I think that is really, really silly. It should be in front of the rider just because of safety reasons. Um, what I also would expect on a bike like this is a range prediction that also works together with a map. And that should be basically in the app because the app is on the phone that is in front of the stem, which is in my visibility range. So that is a very good thing. And it is a pity that the bike does not have it. In that respect, the Stromer is not a Tesla. The price of the Stromer ST3, as the one that I'm testing here with the big battery, is 7,330 euros. Um, and yes, it sounds like a lot, but it's still way cheaper than buying an electric car. And I know for sure that this is more the more healthy option. So, in that respect, the Strömer ST3 is an excellent speed pedelec, but it's just not perfect yet. And therefore, I rate the Strömer ST3 at 8.2 points out of 10 total. Oh crap! This happens to me quite a lot of times that I think I'm done, but actually I am not done. I really hope you liked the video and that it is useful to you. And if it is, please give it a like and leave a comment below. 
Um, if you just tuned in at the verdict, then you might not know that I am a 100% independent reviewer. I'm not being paid by manufacturers to make my reviews. I don't have any affiliate deals and I don't have advertisements on my website. And after reviewing, all the products are being sent back to where they came from. If you like my way of independent reviewing and want to support me, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video. And please like my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram. And if you do, many, many, many thanks in advance. Enjoy the outdoors. Ciao, ciao. And now this was a production that is lasting to about what time? Two o'clock something? So now I'm tired and I'm going to have my cup of tea and I'll give you some blueprints.